Hi everyone, my name is Minty and today I'm going to be doing a chatty get ready with me. The stuff I want to talk about today is basically my no buy journey, specifically my eyeshadow no buy journey, which is something that I have been working on for like three years and I just recently ended it, bought some eyeshadows and I wanted to kind of reflect on the three year journey and also talk about what I think made me the most successful and that is I think another title of this video could just be like why eyeshadow singles are better than palettes. I'm gonna be doing my makeup today mainly with one of the palettes that I created. I created. I just like put together some single eyeshadows. This is um the second color scheme I made in my last video which is like making like a Halloween palette so one of them was like more cutesy Halloween and I think this is a more grungy spooky Halloween in my opinion I don't know it's also not even October anymore but I still love this color scheme so I'm gonna continue to use it until I get bored of it if you hear any weird noises those are my cats okay okay we now have a little cat right here um anyways so first I'm going to start off with my concealer and foundation, which is just two concealers. I have a viewfinder for the first time, so that's why if I'm looking like down here, it's because of the viewfinder. I'm not used to it. Okay, anyways, the eyeshadow no buy. So basically, let me start off by talking about why I even put myself on an eyeshadow no buy in the first place. This all started during like the craze of like eyeshadow palettes. This is like what, like 2015, 2016, when all anybody would talk about was eyeshadow palettes and that too, like, do they have a color, uh, sorry, color story, my bad. That was the term used all the time. Like, do they have a color story? And I think color story just means color scheme as far as I can tell, but anyways, everybody said like, oh, does it have a nice color story and like, People would analyze like in any like purchase or pass video um, a bunch of different eyeshadows. It was almost always eyeshadows in these videos and it, they were looking at like, oh, does it have a nice color scheme? Like would I use the colors? And at this point in time, like colorful eyeshadows were like really popular slash still gaining a lot of popularity. And like colorful eyeshadows are definitely like my thing. I love colorful eyeshadow looks. And so I was like loving this content and there was a lot of like people buying tons and tons of eyeshadow palettes and I felt like, oh yeah, if I'm gonna have nice colorful, like extravagant, unique looks, I need to have a ton of colorful eyeshadow palettes. So that's where kind of I started. And I started buying some more and more eyeshadow palettes. I would say like at the peak of how many eyeshadow palettes I've ever had, like it was like around 10. Like I think, you know, for some people that's like an insanely large amount of eyeshadow. And for some people that's like not a lot compared to their collection. For me, it was definitely a lot. It was too much. And the reason I felt like it was too much is I think in response to this like massive eyeshadow buying trend, there were also smaller like counter trends, I guess, that were about, you know, the, the videos would be called like, how many years worth of eyeshadow do I have? And basically they would track their usage um, and then kind of estimate how many years it would take to finish up all the eyeshadows that they have. And like people were like doing this with like various different size collections, but it was like, it was always like, I have a hundred years of eyeshadow or more. And that like really panicked me. Uh, Cause you know, does one person with two eyeballs really need a hundred years worth of eyeshadow? For me, that answer was like, no. And I, I kind of panicked at this point because I was like, I have so much, like I'm never gonna be able to use it. And I'll never be able to buy eyeshadow again because I already have so many colors, but I don't even have all the colors I want. And it was like really, um, it was stressful for me, okay? Maybe I was like stressing for no reason. Um, 
maybe you're like looking at me being like why are you stressing about literally nothing there's a pandemic about to happen like what are you doing but at this time like i was stressed about how many eyeshadows i had okay and i also felt like for me because i've always had kind of like small spaces and smaller areas to do my makeup eyeshadow palettes at that time were pretty big and they were just taking up a lot of space and that was also difficult for me to manage um and so that was like another contributing factor and then like the pandemic happened and during that time i didn't buy a lot of eyeshadow but um, I also wasn't using a lot of eyeshadow and so that's when I kind of realized I was getting overwhelmed with the amount of product I had that I needed to just stop buying eyeshadow and I think at first I was like oh like I'm only gonna do this for like a year because I think at that point any no buy youtubers um that I had watched did their no buys for like either like a month or like a year and so I was like, okay, let me do it a year. And I started this in fall 2020. Okay, so during that time, basically my no buy was only specifically for eyeshadows. Um, and even then it was only eyeshadow palettes and eyeshadow singles. So like here and there I did buy like, and by singles I mean singles that you can put into like a magnetic Z palette type thing, not like potted singles or like, trichromes or multi-chromes or something like that um it was just like standard eyeshadows either in single format like in a pan single or in a palette in terms of how like successful i was at first i was definitely less successful i definitely caved and bought like palettes here and there um but overall i would say by the end of that year i felt like I didn't need any more palettes and then I stopped buying them after that year. Um, I did still buy like shadow sticks or like potted singles and stuff like that just to try out different formulas and like different like topper shadows or super special shades. But for the most part I had stopped buying um, eyeshadows. I'm not gonna bring my foundation down my neck because I'm just like chilling at home today, so I don't really care about doing that today. I also want to mention if you've seen like earlier videos of mine, then this past year I have been doing kind of like a testing eyeshadows kind of year. It's, it's like a pan that palette sort of ish. I don't know. Um, but my goal was to really rotate through all of the shadows that I had. I think I had a, like only singles at this point or mostly singles at this point and I wanted to just see like what do I like what do I not like really focus on that and also a lot of my shades because I hadn't bought eyeshadows for the past two years a lot of them were getting old and like that's like one thing nobody talks about in like nobody at least used to talk about in the videos that were like you know how many years of eyeshadow do they have like eyeshadows actually do go bad um they can like dry up if they're like creamy formulas or very emollient formulas they can just like start to crease weirdly they can just smell off like eyeshadows do go bad and most of my shadows went bad in i think i mean granted it was my oldest shadows that were getting old so at that point they were probably like four years old but still eyeshadows powder products can get old so um this past year I realized a lot of my collection was actually just like old and I needed to I wanted to replace some colors with newer formulas and I also saw some gaps in my collection and I wanted to fill that up and so that's why I ended my no buy after three years sorry this video is like so rambly but like I just have a lot of thoughts on this subject so that's why I'm just trying to like get them all out let's go back to kind of during the thick of my no buy and me starting to notice like some patterns I personally had when I was doing my makeup and like what I noticed about both my makeup style but also my makeup habits and like what my preferences are and the first big thing I noticed and kind of something that I had been noticing before that was frustrating me about all these palettes is that for myself to do a look I need to pull from so many different palettes like I was like bringing in three palettes per look pretty much and 
like that was a lot like it's a lot of palettes to have especially if you're doing your makeup in a smaller space it's a lot of palettes to have at once and then putting it away is more difficult and just the fact of me like picking up a palette opening it being like oh does is there a color in here that i want to use and then putting it back and then finding another palette and like going through all of them like that and then switching colors and i have to open a whole ass new palette and like grab another color it was just like annoying i mean like yes i guess this is kind of like a first world problem minor inconvenience but it was an inconvenience nonetheless the next thing i kind of noticed and this kind of follows up on what i just explained was that i did not have a single palette nor did i ever see a palette like out in the wild where i was like i like every single color and i would use every single color like and i think at that point it was common or at least it wasn't like weird to be like oh i'm buying a palette just for like these few shades or yeah i would never use this side of the palette but i would use this side and like that's okay like i you know it's still worth the money and i was like noticing this about myself and i think it's like for a couple different reasons a especially back in like 2016 2017 in that like era and like even like early 2020 and all of that a lot of like eyeshadow palettes were not catering at all to like women of color and so like i would find that if i picked a neutral palette almost half of the shades like were just like too light for me or like they would look too washed out and i just didn't like it or if there were color for those shades they weren't necessarily the pigment level that i needed for it to show up nicely on my skin and like that already is like I mean that's just like a problem in general <laughs> in the industry that like needs to be solved but like that made for especially me more difficult to get all the use out of my palette that I wanted to like I remember looking at so many different palettes and just being like I literally can't or won't use the first row because it would look ashy it would look it wouldn't show up correctly on me and like it's just not my skin tone and I know like some people with lighter skin tones would say like, oh, the last palette's just too dark. I would never use that. So this is kind of like, you know, everybody has this issue. So I don't know. Like I, I just did not want to buy palettes anymore that had shades that I just wouldn't and couldn't use. Another thing was I would always be looking for like nudes. And I think back then a lot of the nudes or like browns would lean very pink and I have like medium toned warm toned skin and so when I put on a pinky nude it is just pink on me there's nothing nude about it like I need true browns for them to appear nude on my skin and so like I wasn't able to find that in so many different palettes like I kept finding like nude palettes and then I put it on and be like this is just pink I don't even like pink what's going on and like I was just really frustrated that I couldn't just like pick the colors that I wanted or I had to and I had to like buy like a bunch of colors I wouldn't use just to be able to use like a few true neutral shades. So that was like another thing that bothered me a lot. All right, what do I want to do for my makeup next? Wondering should I just go to my eyes? Yeah, I'll do my eyeshadow next because this is all about eyeshadow. So I'll, I'm gonna use my shadows i don't know what kind of look i'm going for i'm just gonna like wing something and see what happens i'm gonna use two different primers because i'm like testing these two um so i'm just gonna use one primer on one eye and one primer on the other eye so just i don't usually do this this is a weird thing to do i admit okay so then i was like okay like i need to do something about this right like i can't just continue with this behavior especially because you know once my no buy is up then i'm not gonna really have a solution and so um, after kind of like thinking about it, I decided to depot everything I had into um, Z palettes. And at this point I had a mix of a bunch of different shadows from different companies um, and different sizes and everything, but I got a big enough Z palette that I could, you know, fit everything in there. It was, it was a huge Z palette. It was like the one from Colored Rain and it was like massive. Um, it was like it was like literally this big it was, I, I bet it could fit like of the standard single shadow size it was like a hundred and something with those tiny little singles so 
I got one of those and I put everything in it. And that did solve like a lot of problems. I decluttered all the colors that I didn't use. So I was left with only colors that I actually really liked. And they were all kind of in one place and I could kind of like look at all of them at once and pick out what I wanted. And like that was really, really helpful. I found that like doing my eyeshadow was certainly more of an enjoyable experience. And when I saw all my colors together, I felt like I could more easily come up with different color combinations that I wouldn't have otherwise that were more unique, but still really fun. So like I was doing that for a while. However, so there were two main issues I still had with this new system was sometimes it was actually too overwhelming because seeing everything at once I was like in a state of decision fatigue unless I already knew what look I wanted to do and I could pick out the correct colors. Um, seeing everything all at once sometimes it would definitely lead to decision fatigue. So uh, first thing I'm doing by the way for this look is taking High by the Beach by Give Me Glow. This is just like a dark blue matte and putting that in my outer crease. Um, yeah, so that's what I was kind of getting overwhelmed by. And then I was also getting a little bit frustrated because again, this past, this palette was like huge. It was like super massive. So I had to like do my makeup on the floor and then lay this down on the ground and then do it like that. And it was just, it was just so bulky. Like, I don't know. And it wasn't like a heavy palette too. Like this was, nothing about this was convenient. So I needed, I wanted to change that up. So the next thing I did was I got a smaller Z palette. I still kept this old giant one, but I got a smaller one and I said, okay, I'm gonna like curate my own little collection or like to kind of do a shop my stash every now and again um, and pick out some colors and make my own little palette and that's much more manageable. And this I think turned out to be like that perfect sweet spot for me because as often as I wanted to, so like every month, every week, like every other day, like as often as I needed to, I just picked a new color scheme and I would lay out, I would see all my shadows and then pick out the colors that I wanted and create my own little palettes. And I loved doing this and this is what I still do today. Um, and there's a couple reasons I really like this and why I think this is the biggest reason that I was so successful on like a three year long no buy because again I also understand like three years is a long time and I haven't been able to like successfully do a three year no buy for like any other category in my life. So I think this is literally the thing that helped me because I was able to create my own palettes based on things I already had. Mind you, I had a good amount of shadows. Like I'm not like, I wasn't here with a minimalist collection or anything, like I had a decent number of colors. So that made it easier to make different palettes um, rather than if I only had like 10 shades total. But having like a big enough collection to start off with and then curating your own palettes from there, that that is the way to go in my opinion. So because I can create like a basically a new palette for myself like on a whim I find like the urge to buy palettes like I used to like have that like craving I don't know if it's a craving but like I used to feel that like pull like oh I want that palette I want this palette early on in my no buy but ever since I started doing this like I have like not even been like wanting palettes like I like do not care about palettes releases anymore because I know that any palette that gets released on the market, I can like kind of dupe that or dupe the vibe of it so easily on my own that it doesn't make sense for me to have like, to buy another palette. That's like pretty good, I would say, I don't know. And this has also been the most sustainable for me um, because if, when I don't feel like, I feel like what makes no buys difficult is like when you get the urge to buy, um, different things and that can kind of derail your progress. This has definitely curtailed any urges I have about buying palettes. And so if I don't want anything new, I'm obviously more inclined to use what I have. 
and it doesn't feel like a chore to me. I also get a sense of newness that because I'm only looking at a smaller portion of like my eyeshadow collection at like a particular time, like I don't see everything all at once. All that's like immediately accessible to me is like a tiny, the tiny palette that I create. Um, I feel like anytime I open up the bigger one to create a new palette, it's like, oh, look at all these new shadows, but they're not new. Like I, they've been there. I just out of sight, out of mind. And so, you know, that's been really, really helpful. Uh, right now I'm just taking my face powder and like smudging out these edges to kind of blend it out more. I don't know how well this is going to go, but we'll see. I'm trying these new eyeshadow primers and like, because I don't think the Too Faced one is cruelty free and vegan in, and I'm trying to be more cruelty free and vegan in my makeup. So I have some new primers that I'm testing, but like these, I don't, I don't like these at all. I have the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip and the About Face Primer. Um, and like, I mean, I still have to try them more, but so far I'm not liking them very much. So we'll, we'll see. Oh, yeah um another like big benefit that i found at least was my creativity was like through the roof like i was able to put together so many different color combinations that i had never seen any palettes like those before but i put the color combinations together and i was like oh damn like i really like this like i would have never thought to do this before um this technique and that really like helped I think my eyeshadow skills and also just like having more fun with my makeup too like it, it just it was great for that and I also feel really good knowing that every single eyeshadow color I own is one that I love and I've chosen specifically for my collection because I really like it and it's not like oh it just because it came with um you know the colors that I like and that I own this and it's just sitting wasting away not being in use like I love that every single color I have I use and I love back when I did have palettes I used to always feel like smidge guilty for not using everything like oh it's just like sitting in waste I paid for it like there are people out there who would love to have like the palettes that I do you know and they're not able to and I'm just sitting and it's just sitting and wasting away now I'm taking this like teal color and kind of putting it on my inner crease area. This look is not turning out so great. Um, this is in Kelly Green and it says it's green, but it looks teal. I don't know. It, it pulls more green than blue for sure. But well, after doing this system for a while, I kind of feel like I've realized some things about at least the industry and like how like different things are marketed especially palettes and I feel like palettes are a scam and I know this is a dramatic statement and bear with me for a second but like something about this is not a good look like I don't know what I'm doing this doesn't even match what I'm wearing today like truly today is a day of chaos it's fine it'll all come together probably so like I think after doing this what I realized is that companies like when they sell and market palettes they're not just selling and marketing like the colors right they're selling you the theme I, this might be like a realization for me and like to everybody else this is like totally obvious but like to me this was like a big realization like they're selling you this theme, the ideas from this palette, the inspiration, and like like that weird ideal or feeling like you have with like different themed palettes. Like they're not just selling the colors, right? And that's well and good, but I felt like I didn't need that extra theming and inspiration to be able to create creative looks if that makes any sense. And I was just paying for things that like I didn't necessarily need to. Now, like some people may need people to curate color schemes for them, for them to feel creative or like sometimes they just don't, like, don't wanna think about it and like that's fine, like that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about my personal experience. I felt like I didn't need to do that anymore. 
And so why would I buy, continue to buy palettes really? I have been lately taking like my inner corner like really far up into my nose bridge and down here just cause it's like, I don't know, it makes my under eye bags look worse. And like part of me is like, yes, that's a mood, right? Like it's spooky, I don't know, I don't know. And like another reason I don't like the whole idea of selling like the inspiration and the color scheme because like to me it's inherently like disposable because what I was doing and what like other people were uh, like that I was watching were doing they were like buying tons and tons of palettes like to match trend cycles and like once that like trend was gone, like, oh, a super colorful trend or a pink trend or like two color combinations that was like a particular trend, like that palette would just not be in use. Like there were none of the people that I was watching. Now, like people watch different people on YouTube. They're influenced by different people. But the space that I was in, people just kept buying more and more palettes to the point where they had like repeat colors. But they weren't going back to older palettes to grab the colors anymore. They were going back to the newer palettes where there were different color combinations and like they would get different looks, but it's like the same colors that they already have. And I'm not saying the same colors like in the same like combination, like they had like, I don't know, like a blue and green palette. And then they just bought a different blue and green palette. Like I'm sure some people did that, but it was like they had a palette with some blues in it, like blues and pinks. But then if they wanted a blue and green look, they would go to the blue and green palette instead of finding green in another palette and then blue from this palette, like what I was doing. And like, I, d I don't know, like, I don't, like to me, it's like, they're all colors. They're not disposable. There's no reason we need to keep buying palettes just for the same colors over and over again in like slightly different arrangements, right? I don't know, am I crazy? Is this, is this, is that, I don't know. Part of me feels crazy because I know palettes are like really popular, but another part of me is like, you know what? I'm gonna save my money. It's okay. Yeah, so I think like my biggest gripe is like, why are we rebuying palettes or why am I rebuying palettes to use the same colors that I already have? And it's weird. Like, why am I paying more money for colors I already own? And why am I buying inspiration? Like for my eyeshadow looks essentially. Like I'm done with this muse, I'm gonna buy like another one. And like that was like weird to me. And personally, I don't think I want my creativity to come from things that I can buy. Like I want it to come from like me internally. And so by stopping buying palettes and not focusing on like pre-made or trendy color schemes, I was able to actually like look at the colors I have, play around with them and then decide like what colors I like and what I don't like and what combinations I like and don't like and what placement I like where and like all of that stuff. Like to me, I feel like I'm so much better at my makeup. You may not believe me based on how this eyeshadow look is going, but trust me, I'm so much better at makeup now that I have like stopped relying on palettes to give me inspiration on what eyeshadow looks I wanna do. And yeah, again, I totally accept that like this is like totally different for like everybody and you know, you should just do whatever makes you happy. Don't listen to me. I'm just some idiot. Like <laughs> that's fine. But for me personally, like palettes, I hate them. 0 out of 10, I don't recommend. I hate palettes. Okay. And then kind of along those lines, the last thing I noticed, um there was such a big emphasis on like color story and like what color story each palette had. And like I would watch so many of these like purchase or pass style videos where people were talking about like the color story of a palette and if it's good or if it's bad and if it's just a color story or if it's just colors arranged, I guess randomly or haphazardly. And like after like a lot of this and after like doing my own kind of arranging of palettes, I have decided that color story means nothing. That is fake, it's not a real thing. It means absolutely nothing saying color story to influence any no i hate it zero out of ten we don't no. color story means nothing it doesn't mean anything what like okay let me explain let me explain um i also want a shimmer 
Anyways, okay, so what made me realize color story means nothing? Well, I saw a lot of people saying like color story, like, oh, this is a nice Halloween color story, for example, or like a spring color story, or like a underwater color story, or like whatever theme, you know, the palette was. And I was like, or this is or isn't a good story. And I was like, okay, let me look at the colors like on their own without any external packaging, without any messaging that says this is Halloween or this is spring or this is like the sea turtle palette. Like what does my mind think of when I see those colors? And then I started to like think about it, like removing the, you know, the sea turtle on the front packaging and all the blues and greens in like the actual palette this doesn't actually remind me of sea turtles it reminds me of something else or like oh hey i actually don't like these colors at all or like these colors don't mean halloween to me like or you know whatever like i was like realizing a lot of what people were saying like this is this type of color story this is that type of color story relied on the external packaging to also reflect the theming and it seemed like the better packaging or the more on theme the packaging was the more of a color story or good color story the actual shadows were and you know this could also be like completely in my head I could be completely wrong here and that's fine but I don't think it's a stretch to say that packaging certainly does have a big effect on whether or not people like a palette or not and I just felt like because I love I love makeup so much I don't want my love of makeup to turn into a love of like packaging and like consumer goods and I could feel that starting to happen I think everybody kind of like goes through this phase um and I started noticing myself going through this phase and I just, I didn't want it. I did not want it. And so by divorcing like the packaging from the actual colors and products, it kind of made me realize like when people were talking about things like color story, it didn't really make sense to me. Um, and truly in my opinion, after I decided to like put together colors t and like play around and be a little more creative and like try different things even if they're not conventional or even if you know people might think they look bad or whatever I found that like anything like if you believe in color stories then anything can be a color story truly I could take and I have like done this exercise where I have created like my little mini palette like of the week or of the month just like randomly like I randomly generate these new color stories and they look fine they look good they're like I can make nice looks out of them you know sometimes I can sometimes I can't but the fact that like if I can just like close my eyes and pick random colors to put on my eyes and it still looks good a lot of the time or like I can still like pick like four random colors and end up making them look good like yeah maybe there's some skill involved and it takes practice to be able to do that but like the fact that I can do it just makes me even more think that like oh yeah so like color stories are fake like literally anything could be a color story like I'm sure like if I took this and when I put this together I don't know like maybe some people are like yeah that's what I think of when I think of Halloween but some people are like that's not what I think of I'm sure if I like went on Google Images, put in like these colors into like some search function and found some image that had all of this, and maybe it's like, oh, like a enchanted forest. Okay, I don't know. That's the first thing I could think of. But if I found a picture of some enchanted forest and it had like a lot of these colors in it, like the dark blue for water and green because it's a forest and then the sparkly purple because enchanted, I don't know. And like, like that was on the cover instead of this little Give Me Glow logo. Like people would be like, oh yeah, that's like an enchanted forest palette. When really it's just random colors I threw together. And like I recommend like one really fun activity actually is to just go on like colors or coolers or something dot com and hit like generate random color schemes and it'll just generate random colors. 
for you and then either creating a look with like similar colors that you have or just like making your own palette like pull up a color scheme and be like hmm what does that remind me of and then like you can like build your own little fake palette like that's a really fun exercise but if you do that you realize like oh yes no color story means nothing everything is a color story and therefore nothing is a color story part of me is like oh yellow would be really good so you know what we're gonna try i'm gonna use my um pat mcgrath labs bridgerton highlighter as an inner corner highlight and another thing i realized like this last month i was like oh what do i think when i'm creating my palettes i'm like oh what do i think of when i think of halloween i think of cute spooky things and like pumpkins and whatever and picked colors based on that and so you can go the other way you can like turn any concept into a palette by just thinking of that concept and then thinking about like what actually um you think of when you think of like that concept like or what colors come to your mind yeah the point i'm trying to make is yellow was not the right option by the way yellow was not the right choice i don't know how i like that but it's fine i mean one another thing i learned that in order to like look good you have to look stupid sometimes and like today is one of those times where you just you just look stupid and you know trying different colors like i really liked all the colors before i put this like bright ass yellow so you know just trying different colors playing around with things can't be afraid to look stupid sometimes Okay, I'm gonna pull my, that's another thing about um, my little mini palettes. Well, I do love the mini palettes. I, I don't like exclusively stick to the mini palettes. Like if I feel like, oh, I want another color, like I'll just pull from it. Like it, I have a much more manageable system for how to, which them called, for like, how to store my eyeshadows right now so I can just pull from like random colors as as needed so I'm gonna take this kind of like this one this kind of like grungy shimmery green to kind of tone down that yellow but still keep the inner corner light and sparkly yeah I'm blaming all of this on the two eyeshadows that I used or the eyeshadow primers Whew, they are not working for me okay Anyways, so where am I at now in life? Just like with my eyeshadow. So as I've mentioned, I've ended my three year no buy and like for the past, um, I'm gonna do my eyebrows in the most unhinged way possible. I'm taking a black eyeliner and then just like filling them in. Um, just bear with me. But as I was saying, like I took the past year to kind of really go through my collection See what I like, see what I don't like, what formulas have gone bad, what has not gone bad. And I have decided that my favorite formula was definitely the Give Me Glow shadows and everything else um, was a lot older and it just it just was not cutting it. And I decided to declutter all my non Give Me Glow single shadows and repurchase the colors that I really loved, plus some extra colors that I had been wanting in like a gimme glow formula and right as i wanted to do that they came out with like a really big sale and i was like all right it's fate it's time to end my three year no buy so i never had any like you know super strict goals with it i was just trying to after like the first year i was like let me just like continue with this as long as i can as long as it feels right to me and it ended up being like the three years and while I would say I'm not on like a very specific no buy at the moment, um, I don't foresee myself buying a lot of shadows. I mean, I, I would consider buying more singles just if there are any gaps in my, oh no, look what happened as I was talking. Okay, it's okay, it's okay, we're gonna fix this. Um, as I was saying, so if, you know, I see some gaps in my collection and I have some room for it, I don't, like, mind buying, like, sing a single here or there, um, or even, like, um, you know, but I, I'm not on, like, a super strict another three-year-long no-buy. I think for me, this no-buy wasn't about, like, the money aspect, it was more about, like, 
really focusing on how I use makeup, how I like to use makeup, and how I want to use my makeup moving forward. And all, I mean, there's also the aspect of saving money by better purchasing habits um, and better consumer habits. So like, yeah, like I definitely still want that. But I think I did realize a lot of things about myself and I think I'm a much more creative person when it comes to eyeshadow now because I don't just rely on palettes. I rely on like myself and like my feelings and what I find inspiration from in my day-to-day -day life. Um, so I think that's really fun. I'm also like realizing like after all these years, I just don't feel like that temptation anymore. Um, I'm also trying a new mascara. So we'll see how well this works out. I got a trial size of the RMS Beauty Mascara and like, I don't know how I feel about it, but we'll see. Anyways, so yeah, like after all these years, like I'm just not feeling the temptation as much anymore, which is really good. And I think it's because I have a really good system and I think that's why I like singles. It allows me to even have a system that I can switch everything up, try new things and like not feel bored of my collection, if you will. Singles allow me to feel like I have new eyeshadows like every now and again. I want to buy them less. I also want to say like I have also done a lot of traveling in the past year and I'm realizing like these singles, especially the Gimme Glow singles, are not really travel friendly and I was using like like shadow sticks and little things to go travel with and those are nice for travel but I still think having a nice compact mini travel palette is just the most efficient thing when it comes to packing and so I did buy like one travel palette um let me show you the one palette I have everyone it's um the Pat McGrath Star Wars one and this is in Sith Seduction I believe yeah and it's just one, two, three, four, five shades. I got this um, on t on like super discount from TJ Maxx. Uh, I would not pay full price for Pat McGrath's shadows. They are good, but they are not that good that I would pay that price point. And I do like the shimmer formula better than her matte formula, and this is all shimmers. And so I like to bring this with some like stick or cream shadows that I have that pair well and I think that's the best route. So like, you know, like palettes definitely have their place. Um, they're just not in my day-to-day -day makeup, you know. Alrighty, so let's finish this off. I would normally put lashes, but I don't wanna put lashes today because I'm not doing anything. So I'm gonna finish off with some lipstick and then my closing thoughts. I guess what conclusions do I want to make from this video? Um, palettes are stupid. Uh, that's definitely one conclusion. Color story means nothing. Singles are the way to go and everything can be a color story if you want it to be. Yeah, I really need to exfoliate my lips. Okay, so that's all I have today. This is my makeup look. I don't know how I feel about it. Like I like some parts, but I don't like other parts. I hate these two eyeshadow primers, but we'll see how they wear. Um, I need to exfoliate my lips. That's, that's, that's a given. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you want to know more about my like three year eyeshadow no buy journey, let me know. Um, I would definitely love to do more like tips and tricks on that and then or if you want to see me do more like eyeshadow singles content every now and again I do like to post like me creating like my own palette and like my thought process I just did one for Halloween where I did create um, this color story if you will um, and another one so definitely check that out um, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.